Hey everyone, welcome to part four. This will be our final uh, chapter, so to speak, in our vector addition kernel. So the last thing we, in the previous uh, videos you saw, we did the numerics here, this verify numerics, uh, and confirm that our kernel is matching PyTorch in terms of numerical accuracy. So we're good there. And with that foundation, we can then build on actually tuning, benchmarking and tuning. So that's what we're gonna go through here. Um, I went and just copied over some boilerplate code off of the tutorial. This is the perf report. Uh, which will create a benchmark and do the plots for us automatically. I think the main things you want to look at would be the X files here. So this is going to be uh, basically 2 to the I for I in range. <laughs> so basically starting from 1024, which is 2 to the 10th, and then jumping up 2 to the 28th. So it's going to run a, a, size, a, a spread of tensor sizes uh, through uh, both kernels, and that way we can compare performance across an appropriately sized um, <clears throat> set of different tensors that uh, this actual, these kernels might encounter. So other than that, um, <clears throat> the other key thing here is that um, this is going to be what the functions it's going to call within the quote unquote provider, but so Triton and Torch, which will be Triton BR kernel, Torch will be PyTorch. Um, it's just for display names. And then you have options for colors. So blue, green, dash to make the lines. Uh, so if you wanted to add, uh, I don't know, some third party kernel or second kernel that you're comparing, you could just expand this here and expand your chart. And then that would add and create like in this case, a three, uh, three, uh, <clears throat> three entity type of chart. But we're just gonna stick with our two. Uh, it's going to be monitoring gigabytes per second, so throughput um, and the plot name vector at performance. So that's pretty much what this benchmark function does. It's actually very handy to be able to run, you know, quite quickly a whole range of values and get a nice visual as to what's going on. So this is the actual benchmark function itself. It's gonna take the size of the vector. It's gonna be called repeatedly as we, we loop through that uh, two to the uh, ith uh, power and then the provider. So in our case, Triton or Torch. Um, so just like in our numerical accuracy, it's gonna do a random 1D vector here uh, of type float32, put it on the CUDA uh, GPU. Same thing, so they're calling it X and Y, we had A and B, but, but no difference there. And then here is kind of where we're gonna jump into the appropriate um, kernels. So uh, torch for PyTorch, comes down here, calls just generic X plus Y uh, PyTorch. And then in our case for the Triton, if provider equals Triton, then we're gonna jump down here. <laughs> this of course is our kernel. Uh, it's computing gigabytes per second for the throughput, and it just returns out uh, the average and the max and min that it encountered. So uh, I've went and adjusted our name equals main here just to comment out verify numerics because we know we know that we already passed that part, and now we're going to get into some performance plotting here. So let's do um, go ahead and run. I'm going to error, and the error is no such file or directory. Ah, so I already fixed this actually in uh, Triton. So this server clearly doesn't have the latest uh, Triton version. So let me upgrade to the latest Triton to get uh, the PR there and I'll be right back. All right, I've installed the latest Triton. So that should actually take care of it. You can see you're successful to install Triton nightly. Um, I do find a good practice to pretty much update your Triton almost every two weeks, kind of at the latest because there's a lot of updates going into it. So with that, let's go ahead and rerun our benchmark here. So it looks like it's doing the compute of both kernels and running through the entire range as we talked about. Okay, and so we get our results here. Um, so zero, so, so we're starting at 1024 or two to the 10th uh, here. And then we can see that we are actually slow on this one. And then we pick up uh, kind of a match all the way through here. And looks like at the tail end here, we exceed uh, torch. So that's just some very basics. Now, more interesting is let's go to the chart, which I find to be much more informative. Yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, there we go. So blue is Triton, green is torch. So you can see that we largely match, match, match. Uh, we fell behind a little bit here in this kind of mid range. And then at the end, looks like we shot ahead just a little bit there. So. We do a couple things to um, work on the perf here. Uh, so let's close this out. And we had just set a very basic block size of 120, which is arguably too small. So let's just jump that uh, to 1024. I think we'll be better. And let's go ahead and rerun. Let's see how this comes out here. And then we'll revisit the chart for comparison purposes. Okay, so looks like it did change in the beginning here. Well, I ran it at 1024, we are match, match, match. So let's take a look at the chart. Uh, there we go. Okay, so a little bit of change. Whoa, uh, a little bit of change here. Um, looks like we're a thorough match. Um, 
mid-range slightly fall behind and then we do fall behind actually in the tail end up here so getting closer uh overall but let's do one more thing which is the number of warps we want to start uh, taking control of that i didn't show that in the initial aspect here um, so this is our kernel launch here um, so let's add in num warps oops equals eight and we need to pass this in because it's a meta parameter. Uh, so the compiler will pick this up. It will not actually make it to your uh, kernel. Um, the default for reference is four. And if you recall back in the original video on the Intro to Triton where we showed the streaming multiprocessor, you can see that there's actually, uh, the blocks will be by default broken out into four. So four warps, so uh, 32 threads um <clears throat> for each warp so it'll bit, get split up in terms of the actual block itself will be subdivided so if we do eight that'll give it a little bit finer uh, division and have the ability to swap out warps that are waiting on memory to be loaded and so we should get a little bit of performance gain out of that so let's see how this does and let's run this 1024 with num warps eight see how we do there and take a look at the chart Okay, uh, wow, all right, so that looks pretty much spot on. Uh, maybe we're slightly beating here, but we have basically matched and maybe in this very uh, specific area, slightly beaten up by George. So this is overall a relatively simple kernel. Um, it's not gonna have the advantages that we would have in a more sophisticated kernel where we should be able to more handily beat PyTorch. So, but what we've shown is we went from kind of being behind in certain aspects uh, of PyTorch to now basically being a complete match here. Uh, so that's a good start. Um, but hopefully uh, this is let you kind of see the beginnings of writing a kernel. What's the mental model? What are we gonna do? Uh, moving into actually, of course, writing the kernel uh, and then verifying numerical accuracy because that's obviously the most important aspect. And then from there, building into um, some benchmarking and a little bit of performance tuning. And we'll do some more uh, and some more uh, sophisticated kernels like RMS Norm and some other things like that where we can take things a little bit further. But I think this will be a good foundation for sort of the whole end-to-end -end process of um, come up with the idea of a kernel, walking all the way through uh, to final performance uh, tuning and uh, handing it off for actual production use. So I think with that, we will close out this chapter and uh, I will see you in the next video.